Yannick Conny from uh, CAA Markul. And he's going to talk about uh, proteomics and bioinformatics to evaluate the quality of transcriptome assembly and to measure the extent of animal intrapopulation variability. Please. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank uh, ISMB organization to uh, let me present my work. And uh, I will speak about proteogenomics. <laughs> okay, thanks. I will speak about proteogenomics uh, using proteomics and transcriptomics data. And uh, I will take caution because I will uh, speak about food and it's time to lunch. So uh, I will speak a little about shrimp. So the first answer I, uh, I want to give you is why shrimp? As everybody knows, uh, human activities produce uh, some pollutants which can be found in our environment, such as uh, water, for example. And uh, we can directly measure these pollutants to know if uh, water is uh, contaminated. But uh, in reality, this uh, kind of methodology can't uh, be effective while uh, you have some dispersion in water or uh, you can't have any uh, information about um, biological effects. So uh, we chose to use these shrimps named gamarids, uh, which can be found in all uh, the waters in Europe, to uh, have a bioindicators of water quality. To do that, we need some molecular biomarkers in uh, these gamarids to follow the pollution in waters. In biology, we can have a lot of uh, biomarkers such as DNA, mRNA, protein, or metabolite associated to their uh, methodology such as uh, whole genome sequencing, RNA-seq, shotgun and targeted uh, proteomics, or profiling for metabolomics. Here we're gonna talk about uh, proteins which are the effective molecules reacting to the, poly uh, to the pollutants. For proteomics, uh, the first things we need is protein, uh, a database to interpret proteome uh, data. And uh, in our species, nobody works on that, so we don't have any genomes. So we have to make transcriptomes to translate it to interpret some uh, mass spectrometry data. Here, during this presentation, I want to speak about uh, how to ameliorate the transcriptomics and proteomics analysis in order to better understand genomics diversity of gamma reads. Uh, to do that, we have to establish transversal markers of, for water quality in Europe, and I will present a development of new methodology for the evaluation of quality of databases and new method to evaluation for, of the intra-population diversity. First, as, first at all, uh, the gamma reads biodiversity found in Europe is present here. So you can have gamma reads for serum with subtype A, B, and C. Uh, you can have gamma reads watery uh, and gamma reads pulex, which cannot be uh, really uh, defined uh, only by looking to the physiological properties. So for these species, we need uh, genotyping to know there. And the other species, Echinogamaris marinus and Echinogamaris berylloni, you can, so uh, it's uh, less complicated for them. But. And we wanted to know if uh, biomarkers previously defined on uh, Gamaris fossarum B is uh, applicable to all other species in Europe. So first of all, to, uh, to show you a workflow of not Mondale proteogenomics, you have two parts on the workflow. First part, uh, considering uh, RNA-seq data, so you have to sequence to uh, treat your, your, dat your raw data, to assemble them, and then uh, do a translation to produce your theoretical pr uh, protein database, with, which can be used to, for the proteomic analysis. In the case of transcriptomic data, you expect that you have only perfect read, but in reality, you're gonna have some adaptators 
or lower quality at the end of the reads, or uh, lower quality inside the reads, or sometimes uh, missing information, or uh, contamination from human, for example. So there is two procedures that we can use, uh, such as removing or trim the reads. And we wanted to uh, test a lot of procedures to see if there are really an effect on proto-genomics analysis or not. So we have a uh, blue one and red one. Uh, red one are uh, more trimming data, so we cut a part of reads. And uh, uh, blue one are more than uh, um, removing reads which cannot be used for uh, an assembly. And there are two other methodologies that uh, were tested, doing nothing and doing a standard methodology we can find in any publication. So if we uh, look at uh, proteomics uh, interpretation, we have chosen three samples with three uh, parameters to evaluate each uh, of uh, the precedent assembly. And uh, the three parameters we use is the number of peptides, the number of MS MSM spectra analyzed, and uh, another uh, parameter such as the added value of each uh, assembly. And as you can see uh, on the heat map, you have uh, red for the best assemblies and blue for the uh, worst assemblies. And you can see that we can found um, a top level assembly with all parameters and all um, samples, which can be done in, uh, in transcriptomics. Transcriptomics parameters do, does not allow to uh, choose a best assembly for these parameters, for example. Uh, after uh, we have chosen the parameters to, uh, to treat uh, reads uh, before assembly, we have made uh, this kind of workflow to uh, treat the read, assemble them, uh, done uh, quality assessments, and uh, or, or, or RF, open reading frame searching uh, with transdecoder. And the open reading frame searching was set with uh, the parameters was optimized using the same methodology as the read treatment in our case. Uh, and we have done annotation and share it on NCBI. Uh, and public, publish it. So uh, while we have uh, our transcriptome, we wanted to do a biological study. So we focused on uh, two sites with only one species, uh, which is Gamma Rispulex. And we have analyzed uh, 10 males and 10 females for each site. Uh, and we have, real, uh, we have uh, done 40 individual proteomes representing almost uh, 1 million and 50, uh, 50 uh, hundred spectra. So uh, there is a result uh, which can be found in any publication. We have uh, modulated proteins between male uh, from uh, a site and uh, the other site. Okay. Uh, it's the same for female, and if we compare the molecular functions of their proteins, it's uh, quite the same between uh, male and females. Okay, that's a standard uh, methodology that we can use for uh, analyze proteomics data. We were interested to see at another scale on the individual scale and uh, to detect uh, the population homogeneity by seed to see sometimes outliers or subclusters, for example. So we have made a distance eva evaluation using uh, protein expression of each sample, and uh, we have made a matrix of distance, which are represented here on the violin plot. So you can see for May, for example, between the contaminated and the reference site, that we have an unexpected unexpected uh, diversity present on the contaminated site. And uh, uh, these points uh, are from only one individual, uh, which, are, uh, which is a uh, potential outlier. So we put it, uh, we 
put off uh, these, in uh, these individuals and we plot uh, again for contaminated sites and you can see that the population has the same diversity between reference and contaminated sites, for example. For female, you can see that you have both more diversity and less diversity that uh, you can attend uh, re regarding the reference site. So uh, this uh, indicated maybe you have uh, some clusters or differential uh, response to the environment uh, condition, co condition. So to take another look at the same data, we have uh, done an, a PCA which can, which can be uh, present that all reference sites are uh, groups together. And for the uh, polluted site, you can see the hot layer that we have detected using distance method. And we can see that you have two clusters of reference, all male and all female together, uh, almost all male and, to, and female together. And we have three females that are grouped together in another uh, cluster. It's quite interesting because it's, uh, it can be explained that other mechanisms that uh, this group is uh, going to uh, express to, uh, for the response of, uh, to the response to the environment. To summarize, uh, we have established a new methodology for the evaluation of transcriptome assembly by proteomics. We have evaluated the impact of pretreatment of rna data, and we have generating uh, 14 transcriptomes from gamma reads from seven different species, and we developed a method for evaluate the molecular di distances among population. And to conclude, uh, my PhD was uh, the, uh, a project uh, where we have done uh, 160 proteomes representing 6 million spectra and 14 assemblies representing 4 million sequences with 3 billion bus pair. And as biological results, we, uh, we have detected uh, 3,000 proteins validated for gamma respulex. Uh, animal clusters highlighting by proteomics on individual scale. Uh, and these results uh, means that we maybe can go to an upper scale for proteomics and go here we have tw uh, t 20 individuals from each site. Maybe you, go, you must go to hundreds individuals and see uh, if the root layers we have detected cannot be another subclusters we cannot study because we don't have the power yet. Uh, and population proteomics, proteogenomics allow to detect root layer and subclusters. I, uh, I thank my teams and my colleagues from the early day. And uh, if you want more information, I present the poster G05. And thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? When constructing the, uh, the proteomics the database, did you try other ORF predictions other than transcoder, or did you compare it? No, I, I just wanted to, uh, to, to choose a methodology to uh, search ORF, and I don't, don't want to try on a, a lot. It was not the, the scope. All right. Uh, so no further question, then thank you very much, and thank you very much for all the speakers of this morning's session. And I